Hi YouTube, it's M6EB here, uh, back again with another video today. Uh, today I want to do a full programming guide for the Retivis RT3S. It's been a couple of weeks since this radio was released. Um, a lot of people are getting the radio, are interested in the radio. Uh, if you want to see the full review on this radio, please see the link in the description um, for the, my full written and video review that I did on the radio. But for today we are going to do an in-depth programming guide. It does apply to other DMR radios as well, um, but today we're namely going to be look at, looking at the uh, RT3S programming guide. So please like, comment and subscribe for more videos and uh, without further ado, let's begin. Right, well have a look at the computer now. Uh, I'm just going to sort of do it um, all the way through with you and just try and get you a, a better understanding of how to program the radio for people that are a bit unsure. Um, so I'm, I've sort of already jumped the gun I suppose by having the, the programming software on the computer but to, to actually download it you would go to the Retivis Resource Centre. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll just check that we're recording yet. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. Um, you can also get the firmware here, but not quite yet. I don't think they've, uh, they've put the firmware for the radio um, as it ships from the factory on there yet. And obviously they haven't done an update for it as yet. But if you head over to my website review, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. So here's my uh, written review. And at the very bottom of this page, um, as I say, links will be in the description. Um, I've got um, the way you can get the firmware that ships with the radio for the GPS model. Um, as you might know from the video review I did on the radio, which you can check out, the obviously the link in the description. Um, I said that when the radio gets shipped from the factory, you've got a choice of two firmwares. You've got either eight hours of recording or uh, 100,000 or no, 120,000 contacts. Um, that you can store in the radio. Anyway, so I'll leave a link in the description. But on the resource centre, uh, you would just scroll down and here is where you can get all the uh, programming software for the radio. So you would just click here, RT3S, and then save the zip file. Everything's in there that you need. Uh, and then you will end up with the, the programming software. So let's try and go through it a little bit by bit. Uh, I'm by no means a, an expert in this at all. Um, but I've had so many people ask me the question, and um, will I do a video on uh, programming, that I just thought that it would be um, sort of beneficial for me to do one, to help anyone out if I can. I'll always answer your comments anyway, so just drop a, drop me a comment if, you, if you, you're know struggling with anything, and I'll try and help if I can. Um, so we start off with the, I've already put my code plug in here, but it's a very basic code plug. Um, there's not really anything... I've really done in it, but as I say, we'll walk, we'll walk, go through each step, um, and you can see how I've done it. Uh, so the basic information, you just leave this alone. Um, the way I do it is when I get the radio, um, I plug in the. Uh, as you can see, I've got the software cable uh, plugged in, and uh, it's plugged into the PC. So when you've plugged it in and you've got the drivers on, uh, which should be in that uh, zip file that we just saw earlier, you could then hit there. Um, read from the radio, it'll read all the data from the radio and then give you some sort of uh, template to work from. You can do it that way or you can build your own, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I leave this uh, just as it is, I don't, I don't touch it at all. Uh, general settings, I've left I think most of this all um, as it is. The radio ID is obviously where you get your DMR mark ID. So link will be in the description where you can go and register for your ID. Um, but I'm assuming a lot of you already have it. Um, so you would put your radio ID in here. Uh, radio name, you can obviously just put your call sign, whichever way you want. Um, at the bottom here I've got whether I want char string or picture. Um, so I think that's when you boot the, the radio up, you either have the Retivis logo or you can have it say like those two um, lines there. I've got M6EB and then the village Freckleton where I'm from. Um, so most of this, as I say, I haven't touched. There's, there's no, I mean, you can pause the video, have a look at my settings and make sure that they sort of tally up a bit like um, how it is on yours. But I, I, as I say, I, I haven't changed anything there. Um, so, so we can leave it as it is. Pretty straightforward, you know, alert tones, disable all tones. Um, we've got the scan hang time, you know, obviously 
uh, pre-C programming password. I would just, as I said, leave this all, all alone. Um, backlight time, how long you want the backlight to be on. A lot of these settings you can change whilst you're in the radio, so don't worry too much about it. And if you've saved a copy of this, uh, excuse me, code plug, you can always um, save the copy and then tinker around with a a code plug and save it as a different file then you'll always have a backup in case anything happens or it doesn't work out you can then just revert back so don't worry about it it's no problem at all um, radio IDs here I'm assuming I'm not 100% sure that you can have different IDs so if you're in a um, like on the Aliens HD one you could put up to 32 radio IDs uh, in your radio but I don't think you can do 32 here it looks like it might just be three or four um, so you know, I think that's that's where it's at. But a lot of you just use it for your own personal use anyway. Um, so that's it basically. So that's the the general setting. So the menu item, as I say, I've le left that alone. I uh, I don't I haven't tink tinkered with that at all. I think this is just showing you what will be in the menus in the radio, what you want to be shown in the menus. Um, as I say, I'll leave mine alone. Uh, button definitions now. These are the side buttons on your radio. I don't know if you can see, my, mine's plugged into the computer, but you've got your two uh, usable user-defined program buttons. I got that mistake in the, the video, the review video, so I'll get there. But yeah, you've got the two user program buttons either side of the PTT. Now you can use those for different actions. If you do a short press of it, um, you'll get one. Um, see here, we've got short press and long press. So I've set, selected my top button there to change the power level. So if I uh, just tap it on a short press, it will go medium, high, low, medium, high, low, power, and then long press, I haven't assigned anything. But you can see here, we've got quite a detailed um, list of things that you can do with a long press. Uh, you can change the zone there, Seven, 1750 hertz tone burst. You, you get the idea. Uh, side button 2, um, I've got one touch access, we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, the other, the long press, I haven't assigned anything to it. Um, so that's basically that. The one touch access is this part here. Um, now, a lot of you will know on DMR, to disconnect from talk groups and reflectors, excuse me, you have um, the 4000 disconnect command. You can either manually dial 4000, hit your PTT, then you will disconnect from your talk group and reflector. Whereas I have mine as a um, quick app, quick key, if you will. So I've selected there one touch access from the drop down, and here I've selected that it's a digital. That I it's going to be a disconnect, which is this this drop down here. Obviously, you could select it so that you could short press it, and it will you know call UK two three five zero or talk group ninety one. It's, this is just basically a list of your contacts, which we'll have a look at in a second. So you just need to make a contact called Disconnect, which we'll show you in a sec. Excuse me. So that's basically that. Then Call Type would just be Call, and that's basically it. You just leave it as that. Uh, so we can leave that now. Once we upload it to the code plug, that's all saved in there. As I say, you can do the long press if you like. That's, that's totally up to you. Uh, there's nothing to worry about there. Uh, as I say, I just haven't got around to, to doing that side of it yet. Uh, text messages, I think this is where you can predefine text messages. So if you want to um, have a, a bunch of text messages already saved without having to, you know, type like the old uh, Nokia phones from like 1995 where you, you keep hitting number six to get K, L, you know, M, so on, you know, that kind of thing. You can predefine a few text messages to send. Um, I've never used text messaging on DMR, although my father-in-law, big big shout out to you Wayne, um, I do send him the odd text message on it, just because we can, I suppose, it's just, just fun I suppose, uh, but you can do some predefined ones there. Privacy settings, leave well alone, I've never touched it, no need to, so don't worry about that. Um, here we have the, the list of, um, oh, digital emergency system. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, I haven't touched anything in there. As I say, a lot of this you don't touch, so it looks more complicated than it is. But just ignore it. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to mess around in there. Uh, digital contacts. This is where basically all your talk groups are. Um, so 
I'm talking now on, on uh, Brandmeister, which is, I suppose, the most common one. I know it's Phoenix as well, uh, but we'll just do uh, go on the DMR um, Brandmeister system. Um, so here's a list of ones that I've already done. Um, so we'll have a look now. Let's see one that I don't have. Um, da -da 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 -da. Right, well, I, d I don't know any off the top of my head. But we'll just pretend we want to do talk group 12. So here on the contact name we can just call it uh, TG for talk group or you could call it talk group 12. It's always a good idea to keep things a little bit abbreviated uh, obviously to fit on the screen. Um, so I just put TG 12 um, in a group call or a private call. Uh, you want it as a group call for this. Uh, and then you would just put 12 here. And that's it. Um, that's it basically. You've got your contacts um, of your talk groups so think of your contacts as all the talk groups you want to pre-program um, if you're doing it with reflectors as as you can do with DMR all you need is talk group 9 that's the only one you need in your radio and then you can you can transmit on talk group 9 and then dial reflectors so that's how you do it if you're doing reflectors um, but if you want to do talk groups then you pre-program them this way um, but if you, as I say, if you just want to do reflectors, you don't need to do it this. You can just have talk group nine and then leave it at that. Use reflectors, but I, I like to use both, so I program them in. So that's it. Once you've got a list of your digital contacts there, um, we will go to. Let's well, we'll try and do it in some sort of order. So once you have your digital contacts, then we're going to want to do channels. So let's start a new one. Here we go. So this is what you'll see when you when you start off. Um, if we look at one that I've sort of filled out with my information, I mean, you can pause the video at these points. You can see the sort of differences how I've done it. Um, but this is my hotspot, as you know, as you might know. I did a hotspot review, uh, how to build a hotspot video. So check that out as well um, from my previous videos. But I use my hotspot. That's how I mainly use DMR. Um, it's a fantastic way of getting into DMR and I really highly recommend it. You can build a hotspot for next to nothing and a really good one at that. So check check out that video. But anyway, we'll go into it. Um, so as you can see on my um, one that I've pre, pre done, you want to go to channel mode whether it's analog or digital. Now if we select analog at the top, a lot of this here gets greyed out. But this is then active because this the CTCSS and all that, as you'll know, is from your analog side of things. Um, so you don't that'll grey this part out. If we go back to digital, there, that's now greyed out, and this is now active. That's that's basically it. Uh, bandwidth, I will leave that as a twelve and a half kcs. You can put them in a scan list here as well. So this is basically um, saying you have. Um, a load of analog repeaters and you have um, a load of um, DMR repeaters and you want to basically keep them um, separate in different scan lists you can do it there so you can put that in no problem at all um, so let me have a drink hang on so that's that um, so yeah scan list so I've got hotspot scan list and analog repeaters which at the moment I've just got one in there so that's all I have um, so back to talk group 9 um, so scan list none, squelch you can set here you can do it in the radio so don't don't worry about that excuse me um, then we've got timeout timer I leave that as infinite you can put a timeout timer I'm assuming it sort of beeps at you when you're getting close um, power you can set here low medium or high this is good. I like about the radio. You've got three power settings there. Uh, here you can call it whatever you want. Um, obviously relating to your contact name. So here on this right side you can use the drop down. And this is where you pick one of your contacts that we made earlier. So I've just used talk group 9 here. And then I would call it obviously talk group 9. So if you pick down here and you pick 2350. Then you'll go here up here and call it 2350. So you know what it is. Excuse me, and then group list is a hotspot. So over here, I think it's meaning zone information. 
So anyway, we'll get there. So that's basically it. So then obviously the, the RX frequency and the TX frequency is the same for me because I'm using a hotspot. Um, admit criteria, up criteria always, uh, color code one, repeater slot one. Um, in core criteria, I just leave it on always. You want privacy off, obviously you want to get to, through there, and GPS system. If you've got the GPS model, you can set that there. Uh, but don't worry too much about it. And the way I like to do it, say um, I would then right-click here and copy, and then go to the new channel, just check I'm still recording, and then I would paste here. So that's now pasted the information in from this one to here so that you don't have to keep doing the, the obvious things over and over again um, so it's kept like the RX and TX frequency uh, channel name you would select which one you want and then you would go up here see we've used UK2351 so we can put in UK2351 easy easy peasy uh, and then just keep copy paste copy paste copy paste until you've got all the contacts in that you want um, now if we went to GB3FC Oh, it's, it's saying that it already exists because obviously I have, actually already have that there. Um, so don't worry about that. But GB3FC, this is an analog repeater that I've done. Um, so here up here we'll have analog there. Um, as I say when before, this is now greyed out because we're talking about analog. So it's all this bit's in, important. GB3FC, which is my local um, 77 repeater. These are the, uh, the frequencies. Uh, transmit there, receive there. Um, it's an 82.5 hertz tone, so I'll put that there. Um, and that's basically it. Um, you would then save that. So now you've got all your channels how you want it. But then obviously you need to organize these channels because as you can see here, we've got uh, seven, we've got analog here and with digital. Um, and your channel list here will be m massive, really, if you're going to include lots of different repeaters and loads of different things. Um, because even though these are say talk group 9 parrot they're all on my hotspot um, obviously if you've got two DMR repeaters that you use um, you would say go into this talk group 9 and you would probably call this repeater 1 talk uh, you know repeater so and so GB7 whatever uh, talk group 9 and then you would have the contact name as talk group 9 I'm trying not to confuse things here um, and then you would have another um, channel um, which would still be talk group 9 here but you would then use a different DMR so you might say GB7XO um, repeater um, talk group 9 here so it's still the same contact but then the frequencies will be different obviously because it's a different repeater so obviously your channel list here is going to get you're going to have say um, Right, I'm, I'm going to do it now because um, I, I, I don't want to over confuse things. So, what I'll do is I'll get a couple of channels here. So, we'll copy Talk Group 9 there and we'll paste it here. Um, so, the contact name is Talk Group 9. So, I, I don't know the repeaters. Um, I'm just using this as an example. So, we'll say GB7OA Talk Group 9. And then we'll come out of that. And you can see now here it says TG7, uh, GB7, OA, uh, talk, I've put talk group 8, what well, silly willy. Um, talk group 9. And then the next channel we'll paste again. And then we'll call this GB7YY. But it's still talk group 9. Obviously it's just still want to use the contact of talk group 9. But we're using a different repeater. So we'll come out of it. So now you can see. Let me put talk group 9 on the end. Talk group 9 on the end. So now we've got two talk group 9s, but obviously they're different repeaters. So you can see how your channel list is going to get really um, sort of messy, if you will. You're just going to have a massive list of, of everything all in one folder. If you see the channel information as one folder. So now we need to organize it so that we can we can break it down into into more sort of understandable chunks. And that's where you do zones. So if we go to zones here, I've got my hotspot, which is basically these channels here. Uh, 434 dead, 434 dead, obviously being my hotspot. So if I go into hotspot here, um, these are all my hotspots that I want in the hotspot zone. If you think of the zones as folders, 
the folder's called Hotspot. It's got all those uh, contacts in. If I wanted to add more contacts to this uh, zone, I would then go up to here, um, up to my digital contacts, add it here like we just did before. Then I would go here to Talk Group 9. I would then copy and then add another channel, go here, um, paste it there, and then use the drop down here. And there, which one did we do before? There you go, we did talk group 12. So then I would just call this talk group 12, like that, basically. Um, so now we have it here. Now, if you're having talk group 12 on two different repeaters, you would have um, um, GB7OA talk group 12, GB7YY talk group 12, but with the different frequencies in. Um, so then if we go back to hotspot here, um, this is my hotspot. These are all the channels here. You have two channels here, um, so you can have like an A and B. Um, so I'm not going to sort of confuse it, but you, I just sort of keep it to the to the one uh, for now. Um, so this is my hotspot. These are the ones I've already done, but now we added talk group 12, didn't we, as a channel? So we'll whiz that over. So now when I go on the radio, this talk group 12 here is now in the folder hotspot. So that's basically it. Analog repeaters, we've got GB3FC. Now if I was to say um, want, say if we did here, this one, say if this was an analog here, and we did analog and we filled out this part, we didn't do all the, uh, the digital side, um, we would then go here to analog and we would find it here, like say if that, see this, say if this one was analog, and then we would add it. So then this is now the folder analog repeaters, and then when you're in your radio and you're in that zone as a folder, you will have the those repeaters in there. So that's basically it. Now you could, if you wanted to, have another zone. So let's call this one, I don't know, everything. So let's call this everything. And then we could have, say, everything in it. So we could just whiz the whole lot in it. So you're going to have a mixture of analog and digital repeaters all in one zone. Some people might want to do that, you know, you might just want to have everything just as one. Um, I don't do it that way, I like to sort of break it down a little bit. Um, so, no problem. Uh, so now we'll go to scan list. So we've got here hotspot and analog repeaters. So on hotspot, um, these are the things that when you, when you want to do a scan, um, you, you'll have a, a list of channels that it will scan. So I've got my hotspot here, so this is the one we did earlier. So I'm going to add that to it. So that then when I hit scan, it will scan all these. Um, obviously with a hotspot, it's not going to be so relevant um, because you'll know what you what's on your hotspot and what's going to be coming through. Uh, but obviously if you're monitoring a, a um, repeater, DMR repeater, and you want to keep flicking through the, hot, the, uh, the um, talk group to see what comes through, you could do that. Now I would recommend uh, turning promiscuous mode on now I didn't necessarily know that uh, someone actually I'll try and put the, the the guy's comment in in the description, but he pointed it out to me. I don't know if we can we can see it here. I'll just sort of see it here. I'll see if we can. You're probably not going to be able to see it. Uh, but in the met in the menu we have private call private call match and group call match. Um, and if you basically turn both of those settings off, that is promiscuous mode. So it's not looking to match. It's it's basically anything that comes through uh, on that frequency, it'll it'll pick it up. So brilliant. That's really good feature about it. Um, so that is basically it. I, I'm sorry if I've witted. I'm sorry if it's uh, I've overcomplicated it. Uh, as I say, I'll answer any questions I can. Um, but hopefully that's given you a really clear understanding of how all DMR radios work, not just this one. So thank you very much for watching. Right, I wanted to just also add um, how to import the contacts. Um, um, uh, if you wanted to, if you're happy with your code plug as it is that we've just described, you would then just hit here, um, write to radio. Obviously you would plug it in. Um, programming cable into your computer, you would turn the radio on first, let Windows find it and then click OK and it will whiz the code plug across. Um, but as you know you can put 120,000 contacts in this radio so um, we'll have a look quickly how to do that.
So if we go here, I'll leave a link in the description to this website here. Uh, this allows you uh, to put your contacts on the radio. Um, so you can select your radio here. Uh, it's on the home page. You just go just down a bit here. Um, you've got the Alance HD1 there. Um, and we've got, they don't have the RT3S at the moment. So what I selected for me would be the Tira MD3 AT 390. This is what I selected uh, as my contacts. Uh, so you just select the radio, hit next, and then when we get to the next part, we go, uh, just leave that, go step two. Um, and then here, it says how much of the DMR's IDs do you want to include? You can have all of it uh, by country, by state, by call sign. As, obviously, as it stands at the moment, there's a 100,000 100, um, database strong DMR ID. So you can, with 120,000 on your radio, you can have the whole lot on there for, for probably quite some time yet. Um, so you just click down here, network, uh, brandmeister, uh, include header, um, you can yes. I try and just select everything yes. Um, abbreviate country, I don't. And then full name, uh, that's how I want it, not just uh, the first name, I want the full name on it. Uh, then you would go to step three, and that's it. You would just download it as a CSV. So here we go, save file, and there it is, we have it there. So now what we need to do is put that on the radio. So if we go back to our programming software here, um, you go up to program here, and you go to write contacts, uh, and then you just click import, so we need to find it here. Uh, I better put that in my documents because it's it's easier for me to find it. Uh, put it in my documents and then go back here. Import. And why are you not finding it? There we go. Here we go. Custom contacts there. So you just find it on your computer. Press open, and then you would obviously plug your radio in. I'm not going to do mine because it's it's already, there you go, import success. I've already uh, got them on my radio, but you plug your radio in, turn it on, and then you would click right there. Um, it'll take a good few minutes because obviously it's a big database, but once it's done, you'll get a pop-up saying up success, um, and that's it. Um, you can't just click import and then press X and carry on with your code plug. You have to do your code plug in two separate points. You have to do your contacts um, as, as its own right and then carry on with your code plug or you can do your code plug whiz it to your radio and then open your code plug back up and then just do the contact part uh, as long as you do it separately but thank you for watching so thank you very much for watching i really appreciate everybody who comments likes and subscribes it really means a lot i hope i didn't over complicate it i hope i didn't ramble too much as i say you can sort of pause it and, and flip through where you where you want but i just wanted to kind of give a, a really detailed guide um, on this awesome radio. I mean, I really, really like it. Um, so, if, as I say, if you're thinking of getting the radio, check the link in the description. Uh, everything will be there for you as well. Um, if you was a fan of the MD38 to the RT3, you're going to love this radio as well. Um, so, yeah, that's how to do your, your whole uh, programming guide for DMR. You don't have to worry about it. It's really not nothing to worry about. Um, so, thank you very much. I've been M6CB. You've been very kind to watch. Until the next time, 73.